the 19th century born Russian composers, Sergei Rachmaninoff and Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky had much in common. Each of them wrote music of supercharged emotionalism, music that was designed to bypass the intellect and aim straight for the heart. The difference was that Tchaikovsky was writing music that ranged from desolation and despair to exuberance and ecstasy, whereas Rachmaninoff was composing music that ranged from desolation and despair to doom and devastation. Now, in 1893, when Tchaikovsky died, the 20-year-old Rachmaninoff took seriously the notion that he was destined to become Tchaikovsky's successor, and he composed a symphony. The world premiere performance of the Rachmaninoff Symphony No. 1 was an absolute disaster. The conductor, Alexander Glazunov, was apparently drunk during the performance. The reviews were scathing. Rachmaninoff always had a sensitive and gloomy disposition. This artistic setback precipitated a full-scale emotional crisis. He plunged into an intense depression that lasted a full three years. He drank too much vodka, he developed insomnia, increasing feelings of hopelessness and helplessness. During this time, there was a performance in London of Rachmaninoff's C-sharp minor prelude. It was this piece. <laughs> a sensation in London, and the London Philharmonic Society commissioned Rachmaninoff to compose a new concerto. The problem was that during his depression, he developed complete writer's block. He was utterly unable to compose. He consulted Moscow physician Dr. Nikolai Dahl, um, who had a practice that was devoted exclusively to the use of hypnosis in the treatment of psychiatric patients. Now, Dr. Dahl, in addition to his medical practice, was a serious amateur violist. He founded his own string quartet. Violists and string quartets are required to be good listeners. They have to be attuned to the violin voices above, the cello line below, and good listening skills are important attributes, needless to say, for good therapists. Now, Dr. Dahl established with Rachmaninoff that the goal of treatment, in addition to attempting to improve his mood, was to reawaken in him the desire to compose, specifically to fulfill the commission to write the concerto for the orchestra in London. The sessions consisted of two parts. Initially, the first part of the sessions, and the two of them met daily. The first part of the session consisted of culture and conversation. There'd be an exploration of, of Rachmaninoff's associations, aspirations, conflicts, challenges, memories, etc. Then Dr. Dahl would place Rachmaninoff in a trance, and after he did that, he would offer a series of post-hypnotic suggestions. Day after day, session after session, after Rachmaninoff was placed in a trance, Dr. Dahl would repeat the same phrases over and over. He would say, you will begin to write your concerto. You will write with great facility your concerto will be of excellent quality. And he repeated, you will begin to write your concerto. You will write with great facility. Your concerto will be of excellent quality. After four months of daily sessions, Rachmaninoff's mood improved considerably, and he began writing what is arguably the most popular piano concerto ever written. Now, that's debatable. You can make a case for the Tchaikovsky first piano concerto, Beethoven Emperor, and maybe a few others. What I can say with absolute certainty is that the Rachmaninoff piano concerto number two is the most popular piano concerto ever written that was dedicated to a psychiatrist. Because on the title page, Rachmaninoff writes that he dedicated the piece with the deepest gratitude to Dr. Nikolai Dahl. The, the piece begins, the, the opening theme of the concerto is a, is a theme of haunting beauty.
poses a theme um, that was turned into a popular song in the 1940s. Frank Sinatra sang a hit song uh, that was titled Full Moon and Empty Arms. It goes like this. Rachmanov introduces this theme. The string section that introduces it is the viola section. I don't think it's a coincidence that the viola was Dr. Dahl's instrument. 